Hi Stash Rives here and today I'm back with another video on Mathematica and today I will teach you how to plot complex functions uh, using plot using Mathematica. So this as we know complex functions are difficult to visualize because they require four dimensional space and we only live in, live in three. However there are techniques of projecting certain um, certain information down onto a 3D on a, to the 3D world and for of and of course it's not perfect and we run into issues like like Riemann surfaces but in this video I would uh, teach you how to use Mathematica to visualize rather simple functions um, and of course this this method is limited to functions that do not involve branch cards or or Riemann surfaces so yeah so as we'll see later if we try to plot a square root of z function which does involve a Riemann surface does involve a branch cut then we'll see very clearly the branch cut and yeah and then it, it seems like a discontinuity although we know in a four dimensional space it will not be a discontinuity so anyway without further ado uh, what what will this code achieve this code will be in the description below and I'll step through each parameter hopefully explaining it so uh, this code will generate a plot of the complex function with uh, the x-axis being the real component of the input z the y-axis being the imaginary component of the input z and the z-axis being the absolute value of the output and then the argument of the output would then be coded in the coloring so as you can see we have a minus pi being red color to pi being red color so it goes one loop in a sense so in this sense uh, things the when 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 the complex uh, function winds has a winding um, it, it would be it will not and we jump from pi argument to minus pi argument then we will not see a discontinuity as you can see in this graph below I also teach you how to deal with the discretized case let's say you have a complex function but the complex function let's say you calculate it numerically there's no you didn't calculate it using a, a analytic expression let's say you calculate it numerically and in the end you you obtained a set of points a set of points representing the function in other words it's discretized maybe I can illustrate it clearer with the list point plot let's say with a discretized function like that then uh, how do we visualize it using the coloring as well and how do we apply coloring using Mathematica so without further ado let's jump right into it so first up uh, we have this function f which is a complex function it takes in x and y which represents the real and imaginary components of our input and then the output is just x plus i y in this case we recognize that this is just a function f of z equals to z so we start off with this simple function and we define the start and end points of our graph axes so yeah this allows us to zoom around the graph then we do a plot 3d and we plot uh, absolute function absolute of f of x and y where x and y ranges the entire domain that we specified earlier in the graph axis but uh, this is the plot label this is the plot legend what is the plot legend um, the plot legend is this thing over here and we include a plot legend to see what the colors mean so in this case these, this setting over here uh, allows me to assign the color red to the argument of pi and then the cyan color to zero so um, yeah so, so this the one is over here and then um, and then what is the uh, and then ah and then and then the method is the eh? um, yeah and then the, actually this is not necessary this line of code is not necessary yeah so then the color function would then color the graph according to the argument and the axis label is the label of the axis of course so what the magic happens over here in the color function namely uh, how do we convert how do we t how do we imp what, this is the function that tells the mathematical how to color the graph so if we plot absolute of f that simply gives us um, that simply gives us this right so we get this now mathematical doesn't know how to color the graph so we need to specify the color function so how does the color function work the color function works by uh, it, 
mathematical by passing in a function um, the function parameters will be x y and z and x y and z will be basically the coordinate along this uh, in, in this space so what does that mean so if so if I the x y and z they, they will take on values from 0 to 1 so even though the axis over here says minus 1 to 1 actually over here x is when it's inputted into the function x is 0 when it's over here labeled minus 1 and over here labeled 0, 0 0.0 is actually x equals to 0 0.5 and over here is actually x equals to 1 so and similar for y and z in other words the coordinates are normalized to 0 and 1 so the challenge here is then to is then to convert um, is then to convert this into 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 minus one and one and that can be done simply with this rescaling over here i believe you can actually do it using something called a uh, color function scaling but uh, this is an easy way to do it so what this does is it first calculates for each point x and y uh, it calculates the rescaled values and then it passes it into the function f that we have defined which is the complex function we're going to plot and it takes the argument of that takes the argument of that okay and then after that you you take the argument and you you calculate you divide by 2 pi which rescales it down to um, 0 and 1 or rather rescales it the argument returns uh, between minus pi and pi so dividing it by 2 pi gives you between z minus 0 0.5 and 0 plus 0 0.5 so you add 0 0.5 to it to get you a value between 0 and 1 then you pass it into hue and hue would uh, hue 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 is a hue is a function that returns uh, returns a color between it returns this color ranging from zero to one. So if if you want to see it, you can type you can use the manipulate command command hue of z and z goes between let's say zero and one, and you see that it starts z starts off when z is zero is red. And as you go into the middle, it's around cyan, and as you go up to the upper end, it's red again. So that's what hue does. It returns a color, um, and zero and one correspond to red, so it's periodic. So then this returns your color, and yeah. So that's how you plot the uh, the that's how you color the complex function using hue. Then uh. How do you do it? So, so in, if you want to visualize other functions, let's go ahead and change this function over here to something like square. So you see that it now has a winding of, um, it now has a double winding, right? And then if we go ahead and let's do let's do a half, and we see that uh, over here is pi over two, and over here is minus pi over two, and you see that there's some discontinuity along this line, which is the branch cut that we've chosen. Of course, if you if you add a minus sign over here, then you see that you see the other the other sort of the other slice of the Riemann surface. Yeah. So so if you if you plot the two things together, you notice here it goes here is purple. Then as it goes there is green. But if you go to the other slice, then you see that it continues being purple and it comes here being green. So you can see that it's a it's a limitation of us living in three dimensional space. So yeah, so that's how you plot a fun complex function using Mathematica and that's how you color it using the color function and hue. Okay, and how you color it using the argument of the complex function. So let's go on to a case where you discretize stuff. So here I have a code that um, that does is a case for it was discretized. To show that it's discretized, if I do list point plot 3D, I get a bunch of points instead, and that's how you know that this function is discretized. So Let's go ahead and define the function over here and then same thing graph axis and this is a discretization factor we divide the x and y axis into 50 points each so then the first thing to do is to calculate the discretized function so what is this discrete f is uh, uh, if i uncomment this part you see that discrete f by by removing the semicolon i am allowing mathematica to display what this 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 quantity is so what is it you see that it, it goes from minus 1 minus 1 
and gives me a value it goes from minus one minus 0 0.96 and it gives me another value and so on so if I if I find the dimensions of discrete f it's going to be um, yeah it's, it's going to be 50 squared so uh, yeah actually 51 squared so so discrete discrete f is now is a list uh, it's a it's an array or it's a it's a it's a list of coordinates where you have the x and then the y and then this is the output of the complex function so that's what discrete f does and it's all done over here with table so by iterating through i this something like this this line of code will go from let i be start of x to end of x and then it in increment in steps of this which is just discretizing it and same goes for j and you pass into the function f and then you you plonk here the coordinates so then flatten simply converts it to the right dimensions so ah so now we have the discrete function f let's extract the the absolute and argument uh yeah so usually in another line of code your this absolute and argument discretized function would come from some other code for example in my research it comes from numerical calculation of uh something so so yeah so so usually usually if you have an analytic form for the function already then you can just use plot 3d but this is covering the case where you don't have plot 3d you need to use list plot 3d and then the color function is not you don't have the analytic function uh, so what do you use you use interpolation so that's the challenge when you're dealing with list uh, when you're dealing with discretized functions so you have absolute of the function discretized and this simply um, this simply turns the discrete so for example uh, I have minus 1 minus 1 0 plus 2 i so what this simply does is it turns this into minus 1 minus 1 2 for the absolute and for argument it will be uh, pi over 2 so let's see that in action so I, I display absolute and I display argument you see that is 2 and this one is pi over 2 so that's, that ex simply extracts it out using the map and then this is the function that, that converts it okay so now we're going to use the argument function to color our plot so we need to interpolate it why do we need to interpolate it? It's because the color function when let's say we list point plot right um, how, how this plot is generated is that list point plot it plots the points first and then in between it interpolates automatically for the absolute so when you plot absolute function it automatically interpolates it for you but then for the coloring the coloring function it, it passes in x y and z which are continuous variables so these are not discretized so how so we need to tell Mathematica how to use this how to use continuous variables and interpolate it to find interpolate it between the discrete variables uh, to find the color that is appropriate and how we can do it is using the interpolation of the argument so remember that argument function over here at first is a discrete plot so at first this is a discrete one and then using this we convert it into a continuous function so in other words if after this line um, if we if we plot 3d argument function this is the interpolated one now and then we can actually observe that this is the uh, plot of the argument function interpolated as you can see the interpolation is not perfect with these uh, rifts over here but yeah that's the idea so then we do the same thing uh, so this is just all the all the settings so plot label plot legends and then color function uh, now we need to now we do the same thing over here again and we divide by 2 pi so the key over here is sim really the interpolation so when we do the plot 3d there's no need for interpolation because we have a closed form for the complex function however when you do discretization of the complex function for example you only have 
uh, you only have the discretized version because the function is very complicated and you need to calculate it numerically then you need to use interpolate you can use interpolation to extract the to obtain the color function they can use the color of your plots so with that i hope that this uh set this video uh makes it very clear how to plot complex functions and i hope that it helps you in your uh mathematical endeavors so yeah if you do please leave a comment and i'll uh and i'll leave the code in the description below have a nice day bye